Diehard Democrats and assorted Never Trumpers have developed a severe personality disorder. They don't reason, they rant. And a lot of you that were bitching and moaning last night and being morally self righteous, you are the bad actor. So save your breath, all right? We're not going to divert our eyes. This president lies more than any other president in the United States. Well, for more than two years now, most have lost any sense of individuality. And they've all defined themselves almost completely in their opposition to President Trump. They live for any headline, regardless of how ill-founded, that spells trouble for the president. And if such news would be bad for America, they don't care, as long as it's really bad for Trump or a member of his family or maybe his inner circle. They identify as anti-Trump or never Trump on social media and are so invested in their conspiracy whack job theories and negative narratives about him that a paralysis has set in. They cannot move toward deeper thought or introspection or, heaven forbid, contrition when it turns out, as with the Mueller case, they got it all wrong. No evidence of collusion? No problem. They revert to their old Trump is evil narrative. They maybe tweak it a bit, and then they proceed to the next attack. What's happening is that uh, the attorney general, working hand in glove with the White House, uh, is gaming the system to frame the narrative. Donald Trump is legitimate. He is a legitimate tyrant. He is a legitimate <laughs> dictator in waiting. Yeah. They're taking a victory lap for not being felons. And then this from the political sage of our age. I don't need the Mueller report to know he's a traitor. I have a TV. Well, for Marr and his ilk, villains and heroes are predetermined by them. And new information in no way will disrupt that narrative. Now, this dynamic is also at play in the case of actor and race hoax choreographer Jesse Smollett. Today, we learn that all of the charges against Smollett have been dropped following a deal with prosecutors at the Cook County Attorney's Office. After all we've learned about this case, the two Nigerians purchasing the hats and the rope used in the alleged assault, the police saying Smollett sent threatening letters to himself, the actor had the gall today to maintain his innocence and invoke his mom for sympathy. I've been truthful and consistent on every single level since day one. I would not be my mother's son if I was capable of one drop of what I've been accused of. This has been an incredibly difficult time. He's the Baghdad Bob of race hoaxes. <laughs> and presto, with that, his brand rehab was underway. But make no mistakes, I will always continue to fight for the justice, equality, and betterment of marginalized people everywhere. Well, that's true if marginalized people include other purveyors of fakery and hate crimes fraud. He's a superhero in that regard, for sure. And, of course, the media themselves in denial are always there to provide a much-needed assist. It was an overstep by the police department to come out. How does he ever get a fair trial when you have the superintendent going on Good Morning America, blasting him? And there's also the question about how the Chicago police got so duped. The narrative has once again changed from victim, uh, you know, to villain, back to victim. We may never really know what happened on the street that night in Chicago. Well, think of how often liberals have derided conservatives as know-nothings, anti-science, anti-facts. Yet to left-wing fanatics, if you're virulently anti-Trump, which Smollett is, facts don't matter at all. Forget the fact that Smollett made an outrageous charge to advance his career and his profile, and forget that the hoax attack could have incited racial or political violence in the city. And forget that he sent the Chicago police on a wild goose chase. The left is always quick to forgive their own. The studio that puts on his show, Empire, released this statement, Jesse Smollett has always maintained his innocence, and we are gratified on his behalf that all charges against him have been dismissed. Translation, we're gratified that this celebrity got off with community service for his crimes and that there will be no more repercussions for our liberal friend. But thank goodness there were a few who called out the state's attorney handling of this celebrity crime for what it was, a complete injustice. My personal opinion is that you all know where I stand on this. Um, do I think justice will serve? No. I think this city is still old an apology. But they chose to hide behind secrecy and broker a deal 
to circumvent the judicial system. I stand behind the detective's investigation, and at the end of the day, it's Mr. Smollett who committed this, 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 this hoax, period. Even Clinton loyalist Rahm Emanuel, not running for re-election, had had enough. Mr. Smollett is still saying that he is innocent, still running down the Chicago Police Department. How dare him? Even after this whitewash, still no sense of ownership of what he's done. He says that, in fact, he is the wrong in this case. Is there no decency in this man? And sends a clear message that if you're in a position of influence and power, you'll get treated one way. Other people will be treated another way. There is no accountability then in the system. The deep sense of outrage and disgust, even liberal Rahm Emanuel is expressing there, should but what be what we all feel, every fair-minded American, about the Trump-Russia collusion hoax. This is really the tale of two hoaxes, one perpetrated by Smollett on the city of Chicago, the other perpetrated by anti-Trump political partisans and the media on the entire country. The Smollett hoax roiled the city, but the Trump hoax had both national and international implications. It could have affected policy, it may have likely tilted the 2018 midterms, and has already destroyed several lives. One of the Mueller victims will actually be joining us later on in the show. As we've been arguing for months, there must be consequences for bad actors in and out of government. Innocent people who are unfairly targeted deserve justice, and so do the American people whose money is wasted. We need accountability and transparency across the board. A good start would be the public release of both the Smollett Grand Jury Report and the full Mueller report. Then we'll see who the real victims are. Yet even when we do, do not expect the rabid left to leave their denial comfort zone. And that's the angle.